She's only been the nominee for two weeks now. She hasn't answered a single question, not one single question by the media. I mean, why wouldn't she do exactly what President Biden did? What's going on everybody? Hope you guys are all doing well. Welcome to my channel, Modern Renaissance Man. I am Ty Smith. I appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to view my content. I appreciate you taking time to make sure that you do this right here. Hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget folks, make sure you follow me on all the platforms you see above and below. And last but not least, double check to make sure that you still are subscribed to the channel if you have subscribed, okay? Appreciate it. All right, so yeah, y'all y'all know what I'm gonna give y'all news i'm gonna give y'all updates when it comes to what's going on in the current climate right now uh i'm giving y'all you know making sure y'all stay up and up and make sure it stays in your subconscious in your brain about how the democrats stole the votes of people who vote democratic those of you that voted for president biden you got your vote taken from you you had kamala harris installed you guys did not vote for her nobody did they installed her there and y'all had no say so over it they say and claim that the Republican side is doing one thing while they do it in you guys' face. And you guys that's on the left, or even though those of you that voted for President Biden, you guys have nothing to say about how you guys got completely taken by surprise with who you voted for. And it wasn't Kamala Harris. Anyway, that's not what this video was about in entirety, but I just want to give y'all a little bit of, you know, give y'all reminders of what just happened to you guys. Your democracy just got taken away from you. Y'all cry and you hear the news that this is a threat to our democracy. It's a threat to our democracy. And literally your democracy just got pretty much, pretty much, I'm sorry, pretty much obliterated whenever they installed Kamala Harris. What did she do to earn that position? Huh? What did she do to earn that position? Anyway, I want to draw y'all attention to this. Um, draw your attention to this interview that took place with uh, Senator Tom Cotton as he went on uh, Face the Nation. Of all people, he went on that way with CBS News. And I want to hear what, I want you guys to hear what he had to say about Kamala Harris and so y'all can see some similarities in Kamala Harris and her current boss right now, if you even want to call him that. Check it out. We turn now to Arkansas Republican Senator Tom Cotton, a good friend of the former president and a big ally of the Trump fans campaign. Senator, great to see you. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Ed. I want to start with something that Mr. Trump said last night in Atlanta. He attacked the governor of that state, Brian Kemp, and the secretary of state, Brad Raffensperger, both of them Republicans. Take a listen. Raffensperger and Brian Kemp, your governor, who I got elected, by the way. If it wasn't for me, he would not be your governor. I think everybody knows that. He's a very disloyal person, isn't he? Very disloyal. Your governor, Kemp, and Raffensperger are doing everything possible to make 2024 difficult for Republicans to win. They're, what are they doing? I don't know. They want us to lose. That's actually my opinion. And we can't let that happen. It's a must-win state for the former president. And he also said both Raffensperger and Kemp, quote, don't want the vote to be honest. Why attack a governor and a secretary of state who are popular with Republicans in that key battleground state. Well, Ed, I think it's obvious that those guys have their differences and they have had them for a long time. But what they agree on, what we all agree on, is what a disaster Kamala Harris would be as president. She is a dangerous San Francisco liberal who wants to do things like take your health insurance away on the job and give it to illegal aliens because she wants to decriminalize illegal immigration into this country. That's just the small tip of the iceberg of her radical views. So obviously they have their differences. But we're all united in the need to stop Kamala Harris, because if you think the last four years have been bad for your family, the worst is yet to come if Kamala Harris gets elected president. And Governor Kent made that point. I want to defeat her as well, but stop attacking me. Focus on the issues. He continues to not do that. Do you think he's underestimating the potential strength of the Harris campaign now that she's at least brought the campaign back to even? No, I think we always knew this campaign was going to be a close race. But remember, she's only been 
the nominee for two weeks now. She hasn't answered a single question, not one single question by the media, Ed. She's only had one single unscripted moment Thursday night at Andrews Air Force Base welcoming those hostages back. And she served up the kind of incomprehensible word salad for which she's become famous. This is just an extraordinary testament to the importance of having a president who understands the power of diplomacy and understands the strength that rests in understanding the significance of diplomacy and strengthening alliances. This is, this is an incredible day. When she has to encounter the media, and I'm sure you're going to insist that she does, she's going to have to answer for things like why she wants to eliminate oil and gas production in this country, why she wants to ban gas-powered cars, why she wants to confiscate private firearms. So we knew this race was going to be close all along, whoever the Democrats wanted to put up against President Trump. But Kamala Harris has only been the nominee for two weeks and hasn't answered a single question. When the American people get a better look at her and her radical positions, I think you're going to see that they don't want her to continue the Biden-Harris legacy. I appreciate that you're critical of her not doing more interviews and engaging in more unscripted events. You've just done it. Decent job there of explaining the potential policy differences between the former president and the vice president. But Trump doesn't do that himself. No, he and, once and again I dispute this week, that. Well, but he wants, let's hold on a second. What earned him the most attention this week? Questioning whether or not the vice president is black. That became the big focus on him this week. Instead of those conversations about policy that you suggest should be the focus of the but campaign. No, no, Ed, I dispute that. I, I watched his uh, conversation at the National Association of Black Journalists. I watched last night at his rally in Georgia. The vast majority of that time is spent contrasting his record of peace and prosperity and the Biden-Harris record of high inflation and a wide open border and war and chaos around the world. I know you, you played a clip of him airing differences with other Republicans, but the vast majority of it was what you showed at the beginning of this show when he talks about Kamala Harris' record of being a radical trans activist or wanting to ban cows or ban oil and gas production. That's where President Trump's focus has been throughout this campaign. And as the American people start getting answers from Kamala Harris, which as you said, I'm sure you're going to insist upon, yeah, you see that? Sounds just like a playbook right out of Joe Biden's, right? Whoever is running Joe Biden probably is the one that's telling Kamala Harris right now, don't you go and answer no questions. Stay away from the press. Campaign from the basement just like President Biden did. Don't go out. You can't do anything without having a teleprompter. You can't just speak. You don't want to know why? Because she don't know what she's talking about. She cannot say anything about the border because she was the one that was heading the border. She was the one that was, the, if you want to say in other words, director of the border. She was the one that was the border czar. She was the one that was supposed to be making sure that everything was taking place in the border on a legal level, strategically keeping people from coming into our country illegally. But she's not for that. She's for people coming into our country, getting health benefits, getting cash benefits, getting home, free homes, a whole nine. She's for all of that why go visit the border why go visit the border when you were the one that said i'm leaving it open why would i go and see how terrible the border is when i'm the one that said i want everybody flooding in here and i'm going to give them all these benefits from america and then i'm out to, on top of that i am going to ask you the american people to foot that bill i'm going to support us sending money over to ukraine while not helping out Maui, Hawaii. Yeah, I haven't forgotten about you guys in Maui, Hawaii. God bless you all. I hope and pray that everything is going, going to be on the up and up for you guys. Hopefully Trump is going to do something about that if, when he wins. Palestine, East Palestine, Ohio. East Palestine, Ohio. Palestine, Palestine. Tomato, tomato. Them. Nothing. So, why can't Kamala Harris go and do some straight up, right off the top of the dome, questions from the press why why can't she do it word salad i mean it was a you you saw what she did at the airport that he mentioned right there she she <laughs> just let, let this thing keep playing out unless somebody just work with her uh possibly a professional public speaking person to teach her how to stay on point stick to points and talk a certain way but one thing you cannot do is take questions from somebody that's just throwing them out there off the dome that you have no idea what you're talking about. And the reason why you don't know what you're talking about, because you don't know what you're doing. Anyway, y'all, let me know what y'all think of this video right here by leaving it in the comments below at the video. Don't forget to do what you see going on right here, if you don't mind, all right? Appreciate it. I am Ty Smith, Modern Renaissance Man, and I hope and pray that every last one of you guys have food, shelter, and clothing. And most of all, 
I pray every last one of you guys are in great health, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. God bless you all through Jesus.